In Blender 2.8 there's many updates when compared to 2.79, but one of the very cool updates for procedural texturing are the updated Voronoi texture options. This makes little stones and cracks way easier to create. A while back I did a tutorial on the CG Masters channel with an idea I had for procedural cracks in a pre 2.8 version of Blender. Since I wanted to have certain controls over thickness, uh, there was a lot of uh, nodes involved. Now though, we pretty much get most of all these nodes wrapped up into one, and frankly the results with this one node in my view are better and generally more versatile. Some of the very cool stuff this Voronoi texture can do isn't that obvious, so I'd like to get into what we can do and what's going on with these new options. So let's jump into the shading workspace, and I'm just going to left click and drag from the top right corners of these left hand windows to be able to collapse them. So left click, drag to the right, and then left, watching the arrow indicate this way and then letting go at that point, just to give us ourselves a little bit more space. Now since we're in the shading editor here, we're going to want to make sure we have our node wrangler add-on enabled. So I'm going to go over to the preferences, find the add-ons, just type in node in the text filter, enable that there, and then just exit that. Now when we come into here and go shift A to add in a texture, Voronoi texture, and we want to see what this is doing, we can just go control shift and click on it. And thanks to the node wrangler, it'll hook us up immediately into this quick viewer node here, this emission shader that can quickly demonstrate what's going on with this. I'm not going to use a cube though, so I'm going to delete that and press shift A and add in a mesh plane instead and then get our material back by clicking on it there. If you've already seen the procedural asphalt tutorial, then you'll certainly already know we can just set the feature output here to crackle. Set the scale up a little bit and then we've got some simple, well not quite stones yet, but maybe crystals with all these perfectly straight lines. So by default, the Voronoi texture, when it doesn't have anything plugged into this vector input here, is going to use as its input texture coordinates, the generated coordinates. So if I plug that in there, we get no change. But I've added that so that we can actually add a little bit of distortion to this. So with Shift A, I'm going to add in some noise that we're going to add to these coordinates. So I'm going to also add a color mix RGB node and drop that in here. Set this mix to add and then take the factor all the way down. So what we're doing is taking our generated coordinates and doing nothing to them, plugging them into the Voronoi texture. So I'm going to take the generated coordinates here, plug them into this noise texture, and then take this color output, plug that into the second socket. So now if we turn up the scale a little bit, so the type of noise is a little bit more fine detail, when we come to here and hold shift and left click and start to add in that noise, you can see we get some more natural distortion happening. Everything isn't all connected with mathematically perfect straight lines anymore. And that to me makes a pretty good scattering of tightly packed in stones. And if we want to space out those stones a little bit, what we can do is left click and drag across this. And I'm going to left click and drag that stuff off to the right just to give us a little bit of space so that we can shift A and add in a converter color ramp. If I drop that in and then we squeeze the leftmost flag here, the dark values towards the right, we're basically going to alter the distance between these little stones that we've got. Now we can do the same thing on the right hand side here by crunching down the white values as well to sort of slice off the tops. But just to make this a little bit more noticeable, I'm going to show what's happening if we plug this into a bump node instead. So shift A vector bump and let's have this inform the height and then let's plug this into the normal of our principal shader that we got by default here. Control shift click on this to replug it into the material output and remove our temporary viewer node that the node wrangler was doing for us. So I'm going to take the distance right down, something like 0.05. I'm going to switch our HDRI that we're using as well, just left clicking on this down arrow and switching to this low sun in the sky type option just to make the bump really work for it here. And here, as you can see, we have the spaces between the stones. And if we slide this rightmost point down, we can see we're starting to slice off the tops. Now, what we can do instead is instead of slicing like a surgical precision, we can change our interpolation from linear to B-spline. And now this has the effect of looking a little bit more like they're polishing the tops of them rather than just slicing them across. If I control shift click on this color ramp again, just to see the results of that, and we squeeze these two flags really, really close together, then we're basically just left with the cracks. So if we bring the spacing down a little bit more, and then crunch these together a little bit like this. We have that kind of dried cracked dirt kind of look to it. Sometimes you get these much larger spaces. 
So it's kind of worth just playing with the scale possibly or the vector coordinates a little bit until you get something which is suitable for whatever effect that it is that you're looking for. Something I think might be useful to know is that we can actually recreate this Voronoi texture crackle by using some of these other feature outputs in the way they interact together. So just to make things simple, I'm going to left click and drag across all of that and delete it with X and then add in a new Voronoi texture. Control shift click on this and then let's duplicate this with shift D. And then what I'll do is add in a converter math node, drop that in. And then I'm going to set this to subtract and plug these both in. Now we're just going to get black for now. I'm going to left click and drag across these, press G to move them out of the way. Or you can just left click and drag on one of the selected nodes and drag it. But if we change our first Voronoi texture to second closest, then we basically recreate our crackle node. So if I, again, shift D to duplicate that Voronoi, set this to crackle and control shift click on this, you can see the difference between this crackle node and these two that we've subtracted is, well, there isn't a difference, it's exactly the same. So you might be thinking, so what? But the thing to bear in mind here is that for the crackle effect, we only have this combination, the closest being subtracted from the second closest. So now knowing this, if we want to subtract the second from the third instead, we can do that. We're gonna get a slightly different new crackle style as we would do if we were going to subtract the third from the fourth. This pattern has a little bit more of a shattered glass kind of feel to me, for example. Let's get back to our regular crackle though. And I'm going to left click and drag across these and press X to delete them. And we know with this crackle node, we can make some pretty reasonable stones, but if we can't color them, then they're going to be pretty limited. Luckily, we can do this pretty easily. And for that, I'm going to duplicate this with shift D. Control shift click on this second one. And instead of crackle, I'm going to set that to closest. And instead of intensity, I'm going to set that to cells. Now, if we go shift A and add in a color mix RGB node and drop that in, I'm going to plug this into the first, which will bump that into the second. And if we use our slider, you can see the cracks that we have and our stones, the cells match perfectly and each has a different random color. You can mix these together in a few different ways. One of my favorites is multiply or color. Multiply will vary the brightness as well as the color, which could be handy. And as you can see, this gives us a kind of colorful crystals now, or maybe a stained glass window. If for example, we take a color amp and we take our crackle and we really crunch down just to really try and just show the cracks. Going back to the procedural asphalt, I have this new variation where I added some more nodes to give it a few extra little details. One of the things I tried to do was to colorize the little stones slightly. And I was actually looking for the kind of colors that can be seen in this image. Now to find this on CG Bookcase, I actually just looked from textures.1 and just typed stones in here. Definitely worth checking these websites out. And I just downloaded this 1K base color. Now I'm gonna go control space. So I'm gonna left click and drag from the top right corner of the shader editor there. Any 2D window should work. An image editor or a UV editor will do. Now we can just click and drag from the file browser, but I've actually already done that. And so I can just find it here. And then now we're free to sample colors within our color ramp. And you can see I've already done that. And that's why all, we've got all these little color flags or color stops as I think they're officially called with various colors sampled from this image. Now this would take quite a long time to kind of individually do all this. So for example, if we take this color stop here and press E, with the cursor hovering over the color swatch there. We get this little eyedropper now, so E for eyedropper, and we can just click somewhere in the image or anywhere in the interface actually, and get the color that was underneath that eyedropper. Now, obviously this isn't going to be very ideal if we have to first of all, create all these little color stops with the plus icon and then move them into position and then manually one by one go through and sample all this. So let's show another way that we can create all this very, very fast. So first of all, just to keep things clean, I'll just add another converter color ramp to demonstrate this on. And then instead of pressing E over the color swatch at the bottom here, all we have to do is press E within the actual gradient being displayed instead. So when we press E here, we get an eyedropper again, and then we can just left click and drag across some of the colors that we want. And you can see all the extra color stops 
with the colors that were underneath the eyedropper at the time being spread across the color ramp. So a really easy way to gradient map from an image there. All the 2.8 developments on the color ramp can be seen if we press this little chevron pointing down here. We get options to distribute these little markers or flags or stops as you can see here evenly from the left, evenly or from the left. So let's just do that. The difference between the two options is just whether you're going to have a color stop right at the very end or not. So if I choose evenly, we get one at the very end, but just distributing them from the left, we're not going to get one at the far right. In case anyone is new to the color ramp, you may already have some intuitive sense as to what's happening here, but to clarify any values coming in at 0.1, so very dark gray basically, will be turned into whatever we have at position 0.1 along the color ramp. So that's going to be right at that point there. If you don't want to have the colors fade between each other, we could change the interpolation from linear to constant. That I think makes it even clearer what's happening with the color ramp to help understand it. This effect is actually quite subtle at the moment. So I'm going to instead find the node in this node graph that I can click on, which will hopefully demonstrate what the base color is doing a little bit better. And I'm going to hit slash on the numpad, just solo this bottom plane. So I may have the tar of this probably a little bit dark for the base color, but it seems to be working pretty well in this circumstance. So I've just kept it as is. And here we can see the way the stones have these slightly different colors, a little bit more noticeable. Now I'm going to have this blend file available. So if you want to, you can kind of analyze these changes that I've made in a little bit more detail. And I think you'll probably be able to understand everything that's happening if you've watched the procedural asphalt texturing tutorial. We'll make sure there's a link somewhere around here anyway for a good measure. So that's it. Just a few tips for procedural texturing in 2.8 that we can do with just a simple combination of the color ramp and the Voronoi texture. And with a bit of luck, there will be many more improvements coming, such as tiling options by Charlie Jolly, as seen here, currently awaiting review, I believe. So maybe for 2.81 and beyond, and also, a current Google Summer of Code project by Omar looks to be granting some more Voronoi deliciousness. Make sure to check out the article where we'll place all the links. Alright everybody, take it easy and see you next time.